Hello. Good morning. It's time for the portion again. It's Friday. I feel like I just saw you last night. Wait, we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just saw a lot of your pretty faces last night. So fun. Yay. And Yay. Welcome to all here. of you. Yes. yes. Welcome to everyone. It is still not too late. You can hop in Hi, with Logan. us over live on Zoom. Yes. Um, if you're watching us from Facebook, excuse, I'm looking all around because I'm clicking all the buttons right now, but you could watch us live over on Zoom. Uh, come jump in with us. You definitely want to jump in at some point because if you're watching live, you might as well jump over and be part of our after party afterwards. Can I just be super honest this morning? I'm wearing my yeah. jammies, you guys. Full jammy disclosure. I'm in my jammies still. What? We're having so a jammy party? Like this is what I wear when I wash my face. So y'all now have backstage pass to my house. Um, yep, that's what's happening. So I have a sweater on. I do. This is my house. Like, well, I wear this out too. You know, it's one of those cabbie sweaters. So you can like dress it up or yeah. wear it around your house. But you got lipstick okay. on. So you are full right. and ready to go. Mm. Ready to meet. Well, I say my jammies. It's lounge wear. Okay. Oh, it's lounge right. wear. <laughs> I can eat you early. My video is up because I'm in the bathtub. Oh, <laughs> we love you. Okay. Love it. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Enjoy. Hey, Soak. Enjoy. A lot of you don't want to come into uh, the Zoom because you're thinking, oh, I don't want everyone to see me. You turn your camera off, whatever, you know, and then when it, you, a lot of us do that and then and the after party, everyone, you know, shows up a la carte, you know, we all, so here we are, but God, blessings. Yeah, we're going to talk about this. We're girls. We'll just go crazy. Can I just say... After last night's um, after last night's session, um, I may cry a lot. So I'm just going to say, both going to cry a lot. I felt like I felt like reading this parsha even this morning, reading back over. My, I mean, I don't know about you. I should show you my notes and my my. This is what this is what this parsha looks like for anyone who can see my. I mean, there's a lot of pencil, so I don't know if you can see it, but there's lots and lots of writing. So each each year, I'm like, wow, this was one of those ones where I must get a lot out of this because. I'm like, look, you know, you're turning your book girl around like, whoa, that's a lot of writing. It's a lot of highlighting, a lot of pencil, a lot of writing. So sometimes I try not to look at those because, you know, it's old manna. Hint, hint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we Very may good. or may not be talking about the manna today, but I try not to look at all the notes because, you know, I want to get something fresh this year. Right. But then I can't help it because I'm like, ooh, what was I? What did I learn last time? So fun, but uh I won't share those notes, but I, I have to tell you that I'm, I, the reason I brought that up is, is I was reading through that and I was skimming through my, I will share with y'all real quick. Cause a lot of people ask us this and there'll be quite a few new people here this morning listening. So I'm going to just share kind of what I go through now on Saturdays and Friday nights and Saturdays are my deep dives. So that's when I catch up on all the videos of people's trainings that I want to watch, but it's also the time that I want to, um, I want, <clears throat> I want to dive into to actually studying the Torah. So during the week, it's just kind of like reading. I use a, a app, the Hamash app. Um, I, I love that because every day you can go through it and it gives you, um, it just gives you, it gives you lots of things. So I actually pay for the paid one. It's like $4.99 a month, I think, or $1.99 a month. And it goes into, um, it's C-H-A-M-A-S-H. -A -A and it goes through, uh, each day you get a little bit of that of that parsha and it i mean goes goes into some of the hebrew i mean it's a fully jewish site so just be reminded of that um and you can throw out the bones right wherever and then but you're gonna get the the you're gonna get the ram bam you're gonna get all the stuff in there they're gonna jump in there and say this is what rashi says and this is what you know when you hear people teaching you're like hearing that stuff you'll get that in there there's little um there's multiple little options inside there that you can read little commentaries. So I like it. It just gives me a little extra something, something every day. The other things that I've recommended to y'all in the past, and sometimes I'll, I still have this close by, but the taste of Torah, I, I think this is really great, especially if you're just getting started. I think this is really good. Or if you're, it's a week when you're don't want to feel all um, like you're behind, you can always grab this and you, you get a little taste of something, something, right? Don't you think? Exactly. I think this will be really good until we come out with our Rooted Cafe devotional. And then, you know. I know. I think, I think so too. <laughs> Wait, think... that's a shameless plug. <laughs> Is that a shameless plug? Yeah. We're keeping track, y'all, so that we'll end up having our own taste of Torah. We're, we're, not, we're, we're like, we're laughing like what we're going to call it. So y'all give us some examples. What are some names we should call it? Mm, yeah. The other thing that I use um, is First Roots of Zion's Unrolling the Scroll. 
And this is the Tour Club one. Again, I want to say it's really great for those of you who are new or old. Like it's it's still going to give you enough if you've been doing this for a really long time that it might remind you. I mean, I've done I've had this for a long, long time. I think 20 years ago I started. Now I have the hardbound. Back in the day, they used to send us, I used to have ladies, we used to meet in my living room and families and our kids would go run play in my daughter's room and she would babysit them while we all sat fellowship. That's what we call it now. A home, it was a home church. Shh, don't tell anyone. Um, <laughs> but uh, we used to get the little leaflet every week and we would make our binders and now they have the books. I will say these are a little more pricey. I think the, I'm trying to hold it so you can read it. I think that <clears throat> they're like $300 for all five books plus the intro. Um, but again, it's hardbound, lots of amazing stuff in there. Recom I do highly recommend those. I think that if you become one of their partners, you can choose one for free, a book. I know we're going on, I'm going to go ahead and jump into another one. I use this really crazy thing. Oh, wait, it's my Bible. I use that. And then, of course, we use Blue Letter Bible, Bible Hub. And then the other thing we uh, use, and I caution you. <laughs> Did you just may, say that you caution? <laughs> may the force be with you. That's what I'm, oh wait, the force is with you. But I'm just saying, that's the other one. So <clears throat> that's that's where that's where it happens. Brenda, do you have anything to add that you kind of use? Well, I feel very You're inadequate. A purist. She's After a purist. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, uh, I <clears throat> I do have this. <laughs> I did get this. I love it. It is this year, beautiful. like 25 years later, she has a commentary. I mean, a devotion. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, <laughs> good because you know what? That's why we partner together so that we get all kinds yes. of different, you know, yes. think, but I do, um, I, I will say that I do use this. The stone edition. Yeah. You can only read the Hebrew and none of us know how to say that. What is it's, that? It's the, the stone, the stone edition of the Humash. Okay. And, uh, and basically what it does is it just gives you the Torah portions and then it has, um, rabbinical, uh, commentary. So Perfect. if you, so, if you so really like love commentary, yes, it really is. And if you like getting commentary from different viewpoints, I actually love commentary. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. That's, I'm yeah, trying that's to perfect. do this. If I can hold okay. it. So that's the app I use. Hyenu. C-H-A-Y-E-N-U. <laughs> and it has a put, Hamash. Charlie. What? <laughs> it's, I'm sorry. Can you read this? How about this? Yes, but I need to be, no. It's a person with their hand on their crotch. I'm sorry. Oh, that's, that's all I mean. I've seen. It's my sweet little babies. I, I understand that, but I didn't know that. <laughs> it's a shameless, shameless plug for my cute totally. granddaughter. There they are. The whole thing. Then them. we can see. Okay. They're that's laughing. Great. So cute. Yeah. They're darling. Oh, geez. That's how I'm sorry, today. but that's all that it was showing. And okay. So sorry, guys, we're tired. <laughs> You gotta love us. Okay, let's focus. Focus. More matcha. So yeah, inside that app and what is it actually includes that that kind of yeah. which Brenda uses, which is kind of cool. Right. So what I was gonna say about that, if you don't mind me interrupting, is that what I really love is that the the um, commentary that you get in the humash or you know commentary anywhere really, honestly, guys. It is different ideas of different people. The the humash, the rabbis don't agree with each other. And they will, you know, this one will say this and this one will say something that's completely opposite. And I love that because it's commentary. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not Torah, it's commentary. And that's how we have to look at it. So it's good, it's good to hear what other people are saying and what, you know, what maybe the the flavor is that they're getting from it. But the responsibility is for us to dig into the word, like Charlie was saying, um, dig into the word and, and yes, listen to other people's opinions. That's how we learn, but dig into the word and he will reveal to you what you need to know for the week. Exactly. Or for, the, that, or for the moment. Yes. And I recommend yeah. that like read, <clears throat> start reading. This was like super basic 101 that I would, was taught to me. I mean, I was taught as an adult, grew up in church, memorizing all the scriptures, reading all the time, but I read all the time just to check the box off my reading schedule when I was a kid, or even, you know, even as a teenager, you had to read so many scriptures and you're checking your box off or memorizing for, 
for uh, your your courses and stuff in 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 the um, at church. But I um, what I what I had someone recommend to me is that you just read until just start reading, and it's like wah, 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 you know Charlie Brown's mom or teacher, wah, 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 and then something will pop out at you. Right. It might be just one word. Yes. And then it'll go back to you. Wah, 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 wah. I say stop. And go back to that word that popped out to you and just sit in that. What do you have to look it up? What does this mean? Well, you know, we can show you how to use the blue letter Bible. Go look and see what's the, he, what is he trying to tell you? What's happening? Right. And, and I recommend that with the whole, with any time you're doing your reading, stop and go back to that section. And what I found was, is that first it was a few words and then it was sentences and then it was chapters and then it was books. And it was, it was being the little things started to be revealed and then he would open up to bigger things and then bigger things. So that's what I recommend. And I don't want you to sometimes are feeling like I want to speak to that woman who's like, I'm overwhelmed. I don't even know what this says. I don't even know how to, you guys are saying words like Hamash. Like, what does that even mean? I don't know. I just want to say to keep it simple, sister. Keep exactly. it simple, sister. Yes. Right. So we're in Beshalak right today. That's the name of the Parsha. Yes. We're in Exodus 13, 17 through 17, six. We're going to jump through some stuff. Our, 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 uh, our fathers and smothers are released from Egypt and they are then thrust into the wilderness and then they are delivered through the Sea of Reeds and then they get to meet the um, uh, Amalek. There you go for that. And then we talk, then they run out of water, the water's bitter and then they need food. Like that's a lot happening right there. <laughs> Where do we even start? Right is, oh my goodness. Okay. First, the first thing that I'd like to start with is that in the very beginning and in, in verse 17, it's just such a crack up. I just love this. Then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. He's not going to always take us the easy way, guys. <laughs> He's got plans and the plans include all of the things that are going to happen in our pathway. But when, we, when our feet are planted on his pathway, wherever he leads us. And as we read through this, one of the first things he does is he tells us wherever we go, no matter what his, his covering, the cloud covers us during the day and the fire covers us by night. And it says specifically that the cloud and the fire would not depart from them. And so wherever we go, whatever it looks like, whatever journey we're on right now, we can rest assured that as with our forefathers and our foremothers, is that a word? Um, as with them, every, every step that we take is covered by the spirit of the creator of the universe. He's never going to leave us. He is with us. He told us back in Exodus chapter three, I think it was that he is with us. He is with us. And on this journey that into the unknown, into an area that, that none of the people in this, in this moment in time, none of the people had, had ventured out this way before or had left behind and moved forward or, or facing the obstacles that they were facing, uh, kind of like what's going on in our world right now. None of us have faced the obstacles that we're facing right now. He is reiterating to them and reminding them moment by moment that he will not leave us. Yes. He will not. He is over us. He's surrounding us. He's about us. And then we get into this great conversation into this story where whereas everything's happening, he's covering and protecting us. Even even setting it up where when, um, when the Amalekites come, even then, I mean, we'll get into that in a few minutes, but Charlie, right? doesn't it just fill your heart with hope right now? It does. Because the first thing that I was hit with is that he didn't let them go by the way of the Philistines, just like you said. And the reason yeah. was so they wouldn't change their mind. <laughs> Wait, he so gets us. we're talking to a bunch of women right here. Okay, so I, I did let someone in and your name says Jason. We love you, Jason. If you're really a man, if you are, um, 
this is only for girls. If you're just using your husband's, um, which happens a lot, a lot of us use uh, might using our husband's Zoom accounts, just right click on your name and change your name, sister, so we know who you are. Otherwise, we're going to keep seeing Jason and then we're not going to want to say like girl stuff. Okay, so we are, um, we, we didn't want us to change our mind. And I look, I'm like, also, I thought they had to have skin in the game, right? They had exactly. to get in there. And if they had, a, he, they, they're like, why are we not just taking, you know, hello, I don't know if they had yeah. maps. Like, did it's they the have freeway. Maps? Take the right? freeway. Why are we not call, taking the coastal route? I mean, we've all heard this in Sunday school. Um, taking the coastal route up to the promised land <laughs> or <laughs> wait a minute. Why are you taking us this way? Well, the first reason was because he was saying, we didn't, I didn't want you to change your mind. Um, and I was thinking about my journey, right? He takes us through this journey and the way that our journey works isn't a straight route. Has anyone just like got straight there? Because I, right now we are all, going back to Eden, right? You'll hear Simi say that all the time. We're working our way back to Eden. Um, so they're working their way to the promised land. Well, I'm working my way to the promised land and I'm not going right. there by direct route. I'm going right. there by way of all kinds of cray cray. And because um, I think that if he took me straight there, I might change my mind and I wouldn't understand. I wouldn't have been wooed. We talked about him wooing them. Uh right yes yes uh, and if we if we go back to if you're I'm going through the filter of uh robin's teaching last night you're gonna i literally was up in a puddle i was texting brenda this morning going i can't even talk i'm in a puddle right now going through this this whole thing is really a journey of redemption right and i think it's really cool that okay so we'll just get through some of the technicalities of this they go into debar Y'all write that word down, D-A-B-A-R. That's the word for wilderness that they go in the Debar. What is that? Dalit, Bet, Resh. 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 Yes. That's a word for, it's also the same letters that make the word, word. <laughs> word. Word. You just do oh. this. Yeah. <laughs> so it makes the word word. But look up that word. Spend some time. Yeah. In. What is that? What is, what is that word? What is, go through and like, what is a Dalit? What is the Bet? What is the mm. rush? What does that mean? What's yes. the energy in those letters? Where is he taking them to? Should we just do it? Just do it, Brenda. Yeah. If you want to. <laughs> Dalit. Dalit is the doorway. Dalit is the possibilities, the potential, the things that are hidden where you're going from one place to the next. It is what is standing right there. You're in this space. And when you go to the Dalit, you are entering into another space, whether it's a realm or what it, whatever it is, you are entering into a place that's going to take you somewhere else. And that's, that's a Dalit. So, so think about that. The energy that's released from the Dalit is the, the energy of potential, yes. the energy of what it's going to be, what that next step is going to take you into. It is the thing that fills your heart with hope. That's the Dalit. Um, the bet is the home. It's the tent, the home. Or it's also considered a son. The reason being that your heirs are your home, your heirs, your seed growing, that's your home. And so the bet is that place of safety that, co that covers you. It's where the king is on the throne. It's that place of safety that covers you where you are being instructed and trained up and taught in, in what your identity is and what your destiny is. You're getting all the skills. You're getting the mad skills so that when you leave your home, you're able to take with you the identity that has been instilled within you. It's the place where you get filled up. It's the place of safety. And like I said, it's where the king reigns. Mm. It's that covering of the king on the throne. So the bet is a, is a resh with, a, with a, a line underneath, which is a throne. So it's actually the king on the throne. That's bet. And that's the home. That's that place where all the instruction comes from the father, the identity and the mother, the instruction, the teaching, the training. It's where you fail and you get back up. It's like, good job. Do it again. You do it better next time. That's what happens in the bet. It is the place where you learn how to fail forward, where you learn how to get your strong legs on you. 
you know, get your legs under you, I guess is what the idiom would be. And that's the bet. And then the um, resh is the, it's the head, it's the head of man. It's the head of a, of a person. It's also a king off of his throne. In other words, it's when the, it's when, when you walk into the presence, when you're walking into the presence of, of whatever, and you have the authority of the king, but you're meeting the people right where they are. Mm -hmm. That's what Yeshua did. He didn't come as a conquering king. He came as a man. And he <clears throat> came as a man in the midst of the people. He was off of his throne, so to say. He was off of the throne, the resh. Um, and the, and that, that resh is what is... Um, as the head, it's also that place where you're leading and guiding, but you want to make sure that your head is being covered by the Spirit of God. Otherwise, every letter, of course, is a, is a contronym. So every letter can go the opposite way, right? So what we're trying to do here is just encourage you and speak to you, but we all know crazy happens. And so if you're not being covered by the Spirit of God, of course, you're going to be walking in your own mind. That's not going to do us any good correct so right. so so these are the these are the in, the energy of that letter is that the king is in the midst it's like when he comes to the when he comes to the field the king comes to the field he's off of his throne he's not ruling he's coming for relationship he's coming to speak he's coming to share his thoughts he's coming to be with you and that's kind of what gives you a little bit of an image of the hush so so do y'all see a good picture of the word wilderness in Hebrew? I mean, like, how cool is it when you do understand the energy behind the letters and you see the hieroglyphics behind each letter in a word? Did you guys just see her tell? She just told the story of this Parsha. Oh, wait, of the whole time in the wilderness. <laughs> I mean, that's what happens, right? It was that's the place. what happens. Yeah. It was it was really the place of hope. It was the place of, it was the doorway into their destiny. It was the place where they were, and then they walked into a place where their identity was going to be spoken over to them. They're going to a place where they're going to be learning. And it's a place where they can, I heard her say, fail forward. Yes. It's a place where they can mess up. And guess what? They're going to do it not in front of everyone. He loves us so much that some he's protecting them from being crazy. Now, if he had sent them straight into the land of Canaan, milk and honey, what would they have brought with them? No. They would have been bringing with them all their Egyptian crazy. It yeah. would have all been brought with them. They mm -hmm. would they would have brought it all with them. So can you imagine going on your the journey that you've gone on? I and mean, if you went straight from save to a ministry, you'd have been bringing all that other stuff with you. I remember hearing, I think Joyce Myers, some, I'm pretty sure it was her saying a long time ago, this was a long time ago, saying that when she first started in her ministry, she was teaching Bible study in short shorts and a, smoking a cigarette you know, in her living room. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that we, we do when we're coming straight out of our Egypt, coming straight out of our stuff, right? Yeah. Going into, he, but he took him to Debar. Yeah. Not because it was a punishment. It was because he just loved him so much. He said, I'm going to hide you. And he says, I'm yeah. going to put my, he, you see, you heard the king, he was going to put his covering over them. Oh, wait, we're going to call yeah. it a cloud. And we're going to, I'm going to keep you in a little house and I'm going to, oh wait, I'm going to build a house out here and I'm going to show you how to meet with me. Yeah. I mean, it's all in the word. The whole yeah. story is just in that word, really. So bye. Thank you guys you. have a great weekend and, right. <laughs> and we're done. And, and we're, we're done. done. You know, the neat thing too, about, about all of this is that he's calling us to, to tabernacle among him, right? Yes. So he yes. is, not only is he calling us collectively to tabernacle with him, Cause that's, that's, what's happening. Actually, all the people are gathering together, their tabernacle, they're, they're yeah. right there. They're all that, but he's also asking us individually to become the dwelling place of his spirit. And so he has to train us up how to do that. And that's what this journey is all about. And he wants to instill within us. And I'm saying us, because this is happening. This isn't just a story for the past. No, this is also a story to help us walk through our day-to-day -day life. This is how we apply it to our lives today. He wants to dwell within us. Then we need to be particularly careful of how we are housing and representing the presence of the Holy One. Yes. And yes. that goes into what we're doing on our Tuesday talks over in the um, 
Rudy Cafe. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have even mentioned that. But anyway, over in the cafe, we do on Tuesday Talks, we're going through a whole section of identity and destiny. What is your testimony? What is your identity? Who are you? How do you know who you are? And that's what we're doing over there. But um, it kind of bleeds over into this because really he is instilling our destinies and our identities to us right now in the midst of this gathering and this and this movement yeah so good simi i have you i have you hanging out with us what's up hey yeah Simi. i was so excited when you were talking about that because one of the things that um that you know this little part before we we go into actually um crossing the the red sea is that they're still in egypt Mm -hmm. And a lot of us don't realize that, you know, they just left slavery, so to speak, where they were, mm -hmm. but Sukkot, which is the first place where God takes them, you know, he, you know, they, they camped there, they made a tent, that's still Egypt. And uh, so I don't know, I guess because, you know, when I was a kid, I would watch the movie and then they leave and the other ones are chasing them and then the waters part and then they go across and then we are in the promised land. You know, we, we are outside of Egypt. And, uh, but uh, there's still, you know, when you're talking about the column of that pillar of um, cloud and that pillar of fire, they're still there. It says, then they set out from Sukkot and camped in Etham. So Sukkot is, you know, the, the a tent where they camped, like he makes his, their, he, he made a tent for them to dwell still in Egypt. So think about that for us. You know, yes. he does that to us in still in the midst of our, you know, having our shorts and drink, smoking our cigarette. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> whoever, whoever that was. Um you know, teaching, you know, we're still in a mess, you know, we still have Egypt all over us. <laughs> yes. But he is, he encloses us and protects us in there. Think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? But then Etham means um, solid, enduring. So he brings us into a safe place. He's dancing with us in that furnace. We're still in it but he's with us in there. And, um, and then this was the, the part that really um, hit me this time reading it again was that he says, okay, so you're going to encamp before Pehirat. Well, I don't know how it says it in this one. Um, I was reading it in the complete Jewish Bible. Uh, and this one, it says at, oh, at the edge of the wilderness, doesn't give a name. Well, yeah, but the yeah. actual name is <laughs> Pehiroth, which means the Pei's mouth and the the word Rosh, Rosh it almost sounds like whore, but <laughs> it's it has a sound. Um, is hole opening socket? So he takes them before there, before they face that mouth and that hole, you know. What was it going to be? Are you going to go into that mouth and hole? Hole, and then he says between Migdal and Baal Zephon. So those two places, uh, Migdal comes from Gadal, which means to grow up, to become great. So we have two choices: we can either grow up and become great, or we can go Baal Zephon is the Baal of winter, cold. Um, it comes the, where the word typhoon comes from, and it means destroyer. So we can become great and grow up, or grow up and become great, or we can just become cold and be destroyed and die. You know, winter, the sea dies during winter, right? So it was really neat that he, he takes them there, and that is the point where War comes to Pharaoh and says, you know, the people are just wondering. They don't seem to know. It looks like the desert has swallowed them up. Let's just go and get them. And, you know, then the action starts. But I just wanted to share that part. Oh, but I love it. That's precious. Love that. It's so good. That is so good. We, uh, wow. I love that you said, it was funny because I was reading that this morning and I was just reading about the, the two different places that they were in between. And I was thinking, gosh, do we go into that? I, I don't even know enough to, I would just be 
not so thank you that was an answer to prayer simi i appreciate you for that you know i love that the uh <clears throat> the the encampment was in an when you're looking at the words when we're seeing those words they're not they're not just like oh yeah by the way i just want you to know there's a reason those words are put out there so it's always a good thing write the little word down and maybe next year you if you can't do it this year next year you look it up but looking up those words is one of the things you can do in your study um, what else did I put in here? I just just kept thinking about not taking Egypt with them and how um, he, he took them on this long journey. So anyways, I'm thinking about how is he working in my life? How is he working in the things that he didn't let me bring Egypt? He didn't make me do a quick jaunt from where I was to because I would have brought if I brought the things when I was 30, even to where I'm at at 52 and the things he's having me do and calling me to do, it would be crazy. I, I, it would kill me. It would kill my family. It would, it would, it would ruin me. So, I mean, Brenda, you the same. <laughs> yeah, it really would. I'm sorry. I got a little distracted. I was trying to answer some questions. Oh, okay. Well, you know, he just wants to do great get... on both sides. <laughs> I finally went to full screen. So if you guys want to talk, you have to unmute and start yakking and then I'll go find you. Cause I was distracted looking at all of you across the screen and what you're doing. I'm like, okay, stop focus sister. Um, <laughs> uh, we have to reach spiritual maturity sisters yes, we, we have to reach spiritual maturity and that's we have to see if this was not a punishment because they didn't listen because they were gri i mean i grew up always thinking man if i had seen all those miracles i wouldn't be a griper really would you i mean really think about your life how many things have you seen would you i think you would um <laughs> so they're set out. I'm not going to talk about the county of the Omer, but I am going to let you know that the county of the Omer does represent this journey. And it's really interesting that 49 days is like, it's 49 days that seven this whole, weeks, right? It's seven so weeks. Beautiful. <laughs> so when we get closer to that, I'd really like to just go into that a little more about counting the Omer and what that all looks like. And, and because it, what they were look they were going for, they didn't even know, they didn't even know what these seven weeks were going to be like before they were going to get when they were going to get the word, when Torah was going to be given to them. And well, I guess we're talking about it. So those 49 days, in those same seven weeks, remember that when Yeshua left, think about the days he left, things about when he left, think about the time he spent with them. And then he said, they were in the middle of counting the Omer when he left. They were in the middle of this season and this time, and they were counting, uh, they, were, they were looking forward to celebrating uh, Shavuot. We've called it in church Pentecost. Um, they were looking forward to that. And we hear him say, wait, get together, wait. And so it says when they were gathered together in the upper room, it's not like they were like, oh, randomly gathered having church and they're waiting mm -hmm. for them all to start speaking in tongues. And I was going to say playing with snakes, but um, they were not all waiting for what, what they were there for a reason. They were reenacting all these things that had gone on and what they were told to do. This was part of tradition. And we have been ladies, we have been told to do this. We've been told to do the same thing mm -hmm. for a reason. Mm -hmm. And it's all generations. We hear Paul talking about, it. I think it's in Corinthians, first Corinthians uh, 10. And he's talking to, he's the, the, he, the Corinthians were Jews and Gentiles, mostly Gentiles. And he was saying, our fathers, we need to do this because our fathers did this. And our fathers did this. He was grafting them in and, and he's telling us our fathers. So you can say we have to, do, when you sit with your children and you're teaching your children, it's because we're teaching them because it's what our fathers went through. Right. Right. Right, because we, because we are uh, um, grafted, adopted. If we are not bloodline, if we are bloodline, we're in that. If we're not bloodline, we're adopted. It's just, and we learn this because right now all of the children of Israel are coming out. They're a mixed multitude. It's whoever says yes, you are my God. Yes, I will. That's that's the B'nai Israel. That's yes. what that is. And so, yes, Charlie, thank you for reiterating that. It's not just a Jewish thing. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, Yeshua is our Messiah. He's the one, he's the one that has, his life is within us. That is, we are his light bearers. We are his, we are made in his image. And it, and it, that's why, that's why Paul says, I hope I'm quoting this right neither Jew nor Gentile. The reason is it's not, it's not saying that's not valuable. That's not valuable. It's saying, you know what, collectively it's, it's the body of Messiah. Mm -hmm. 
it's so important that we stop distinguishing between everything because when we distinguish, we compare. And when we compare, yeah. we complain. And when we complain, what? Bitter waters. Well, we're going to see that happen because <laughs> what had happened when they were arguing and complaining, if you read it and you actually take it down to the Hebrew, what I was reading, I think I popped this out of uh, Halisa's teaching for this week. I just happened to open it up and there it was. I haven't jumped in yet, but I put my toe in the water and it, she was saying that when you when you con when you go down to the Hebrew when they were complaining about what about things they were actually saying um, what have you done to me and my family and they forgot to be a community and so yes. that was what that's what he had to work out of them you know if they had have gone the straight coastal route they would have would they have missed Torah because they yes. were supposed to have been given their identity they were supposed to have given the word they were supposed to have been given spoken the words the 10 words over them they would have missed that that whole encounter that would i mean they would have missed the encounter if they had gone a story that brenda told me i mean back in my early early years of randy and i's marriage um Brent, you want to share what you sh shared with me it's easier when you said it prettier than i do well no i wouldn't say it prettier but yeah, you when you were when you and randy were first married you know you don't have when you're first together you don't have a history you don't you don't have that thing that you can settle into and say you know what we've been through this before we're going to get through this again or i remember when we went through something similar to this and so i know that we're going to be able to work it out you don't have that when you're first in a new relationship and um charlie and randy were uh, having to go through some difficult difficult things circumstantially some difficult things that they were going through and i was just encouraging her right now you don't have a history but pretty soon you're going to have a history and right now it's a lot of work right now you're building your history right now you are plowing through the unknown and the unseen and you're having to build that but pretty soon you're going to be able to step back and go oh right i remember that we were we got through that and we're going to get through this so you you start building your history and now charlie look at you guys you've been together you've built history you've made it through the roughest of times and and continued the rough times and yet now your life is filled with joy and now you can look back and go i know this is hard but we're going to get through it. And that's what our ancestors are telling us right now. That's the story that we have to collectively gather from this, ladies. They made it through. Was it pretty? Not always. Was it rough? All the time. It was. Mm -hmm. Did they always succeed? No, they didn't. And we get to learn from their failures because we get to fail forward. Yes. Like they did just like they did just like they did and there were so many times during that for early parts of our marriage i was just like them the just like the israelites in i'm exodus 14 i think it's 14 i wrote 14 12 i think yeah when they're like well i was better off we were better off and i'm laughing because i'm thinking how many times did i say that i was better off single i was better oh. off i would have been better off if i had a da 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 i'm looking back looking back reevaluating thinking well i would have been better off if i had made these choices instead i would have been better off if i had stayed in this place i would have been better off if i never had these kids i'd have been better off if i had a i mean sisters how many times have you said i would have been better off and that's that's exactly what's happening with them yeah i know I, yeshua was talking about um being set free for something and i i don't I wrote this down because um they were set free and they're coming up to the edge and they're they're like okay well here we are and they could either go around it and go up the coast or they're going to have to go through so they could either have a c section and get through this quick or they're going to have <laughs> to be <nurse>. birthed <laughs> they're going to have to be birthed through the waters they're going to have to go through mikvah i mean there's a lot of things this we could go to we could just stay here for the rest of the day but we're going to go y'all spend some time and maybe next year but they had to go through a birthing canal they had to get through this place they had to get out of there but what happened is even yeshua talks about saying when a spirit leaves someone i mean they look back and there's there's the armies are all coming against them everything's everyone i can you even imagine i mean really let's all stand there for a minute and this has happened to you you've been delivered from something and then you feel like you're worth worth worse off and then you're like well i would have been better off then you're like i would have been better off if i had been i thought that was bad this is worse i just went from the frying pan into the fire can't believe this happened well, first thing that happens is uh, I'll just say Yeshua talks about uh, when you're when a man is delivered of a spirit that the spirit will actually come back and bring seven friends. 
it'll come back to see how you're doing and then bring seven friends and you have to be di diligent because if we're delivered of something, you might've been delivered of an addiction. You might've been delivered of, I don't, what have you been delivered of? I don't know. But what'll happen is we have an enemy that might come back with seven friends and we have to be diligent. He may come back with the Pharaoh's army and say, and we can still, we have the power that rose Yeshua from the dead to say, get up. I resist you and they have to flee, right? I'm not trying to bring fear in anything, but this is a leadership perspective. I want to give you a leadership perspective on this from Moses, you women as the leaders in your families of over your children, over, over your homes, protecting you uh, to the Azer Connectos. I'm calling you out right now, sisters, because imagine the women standing around saying what my children, I'm, can you see them gathering the hens? Can you see them seeing the army? Like, what are we going to do? Everybody's frantic fr and Moses, what he doesn't do is he doesn't divide everybody up. Mm -mm. He doesn't divide them up. He doesn't have them take all the possessions that they got from Egypt and start melting them down and making uh, weapons. He doesn't, no, that's not what happens. He doesn't start looking for the strong men and start dividing. And, and, and we see later people being divided and, and we'll see in the book of names where their names are called out and they start being divided. But that's not what's happening right here. What, he ha what happens is he says, stand by. What? It's like you're on a plane and it's about to crash and you and and the, and the pilot just says stand by and like the masks haven't even come down you're like well the masks aren't coming down i don't even know what's happening what are we going to do we're going to crash we're going to die and the pilot just says stand by really he says stand by and then and then um then he tells them to shut their pay hole i mean pretty much god tells you know he goes to god and god says hey exodus 14 14 he tells him be quiet not not screaming, not going crazy, but be quiet. Because you know what? There's been so many times, and you will hear us tell this story often, there, that in the middle of some crazy at one time, the father showed me the verse when he says that, that when he has something to say, that the angels put their wings down so that he can be heard. Because they're, can you imagine, whoosh, 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 the big noise of their, their, their wings. He says they, they lower their ring, wings and then he speaks and the father showed me one time but he'll say wings down girl so when you hear us say wings down girl you know what that means it means put your wings down so you can hear mm -hmm. you're flapping around and making so much noise you're like a chicken running around the chicken coop and you're made to be an eagle and you know when the winds get really crazy up in the skies what happens you don't hear them up there squawking like a chicken they're not up there their pay hole is closed it's like they are up there their beaks are closed and what do they do have you seen them they stretch out and they just glide or they put their wings down and they'll just, I mean, and they'll just zoom down to go get something. I mean, there's no effort. It's just beautiful. It looks no effort. I'm sure it is a lot of effort, but anyways, so Matthew 14, 27, remember Yeshua also says, take heart. Don't be afraid. Right. Don't be afraid. He tells Peter, come on, be a water walker. Come with me. And I always see that story too, is it wasn't the miracle that he didn't, that he, that, uh, that he could walk on the water. The miracle was when he started to sink that Yeshua reached out his hand and, and met him in his, in his insufficiencies and lifted him up. And that's what we see happening right here. We see the Savior standing in and meeting him and letting him be, well, they're not, they're going to walk on dry land. And I'm excited. 15.8, uh, the deep water is actually said congealed, which Rashi says it's like they turn, it turned like rock that the deep waters congealed. It turned like a rock. So they walked across the rock. Hello. Ooh. They walked across the rock to get to the other side. And all I could think of was, can you imagine those who had been told the stories their whole life about the covenant made with their forefather, Noah, that he would never destroy them by water again? that he was reinforcing that covenant that he had made for them as he walked and let them walk through that. And they didn't need a, they didn't, all they needed was to walk through. And he was just reinforcing, like, I, I'm still that God who keeps that covenant and I'm going to make more covenants with you. And I have to show you that I'm not going to let water kill you. I, I just thought it was cool. That's so beautiful. I love that. I love the part two where he says, um, stand still. Let me, let me look at that. He says, stand still. You, you, you said that part already. Um, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Yeshua in Hebrew. Yeshua. Do you hear that? Stand still mm -hmm. and see Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Right there, right there. 
Um, and then he's saying, it's so beautiful because he's promising us things of, of how, what is coming. He's going to, pro he's promising us the Egyptians that you see today, you will never see them again forevermore. And the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And where do we hear that? We hear that in the new Testament when it's talking about going into someone's going into someone's home. And if they refuse to receive the testimony of Yeshua, then you are to keep your peace. You're to hold your peace. You're to keep it. You're to keep your peace. That just, that doesn't mean you withdraw shalom from them. It means that you keep, you be still, you hang on to what you know. And when you leave, you leave the fragrance of Messiah behind you and you go and yes. allow the spirit of God to speak to that thing. And now here he is, the Lord, he will fight for you. And then, the, and then, and then what's happening in the midst of all of this is that the Holy one is, it says in, in English, it says he's hardening Pharaoh's heart, but we know in Hebrew, what that saying is that he is honoring the heart. He, he is honoring that he's, in other words, he's the not will. changing. He's not changing Pharaoh's heart. He's not mm -mm. saying that's your heart, but if I want to, I could change it, but he's not doing that. He's honoring that thing that Pharaoh is determined to do, and he's strengthening it so that he can go ahead and complete what he's doing. And that's what he's doing. And, um, and Pharaoh changed his mind, like, what am I thinking? These people can't leave. We need them back. Mm. Who's going to do all the work? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's just, it's just so I mean, there's so much you guys really and like Charlie said, so that's, that's one of our favorite things is that when you're reading the Torah portion, please don't feel like you have to get every single little thing. You have to read it. You have to read 27 commentaries. You have to study out every single Hebrew word. Listen, this is a lifetime. This word is alive and living. And if you read the first sentence and you stop at the third word and you sit in that third word for the week or for the month. And you allow the Holy One to download to you what he's saying to you and secure you and who you are and speak identity to you of who you are and what he has for you. And the story will come and have conversations with people. Talk about these things. Talk about it when you're sitting down. Talking about it when you're going out. Talk about it when you're on your Zoom meetings with coffee chats with your friends. Talk about it. A let it be alive and living within you. Please don't feel like you have to be the most intelligent person in the room and you have to know everything and you have to get out there and just take a breath and allow him to speak life to you. Now, if him speaking life to you is that you need to study it out and you need to study every Hebrew word, then sister, get your pen and paper and do it. Yeah. But if that's not what he's speaking to you right now, please don't compare yourselves. He's teaching us right now through the history of our family genetics, <laughs> whether it's adopted genetics or it's genetic genetics. He's teaching us that when we compare ourselves with one another, it brings nothing but destruction, destruction to us and destruction to the people that we compare ourselves to because it doesn't allow them to be who they are. It, it, and then it destroys the people around you. If you are comparing yourself with, if I compare myself to Charlie, then, all, then my children who are adults now, but if they were living at home, then they would say, my gosh, mom's always comparing herself and coming up short to her comparison to Charlie. I guess I'm not as good as I, I could be. And I guess that you see what happens? It breeds complaint, breeds complaint. So we need to really take this word very, very seriously. We're coming into Pesach physically here. Those of us here are coming into Pesach. We need to be preparing for what's to come. And these are the things that we need to get taken care of house cleaning right now. Today is Friday prep day, right? Prep day prep for day. the Shabbat, right? So these are the things that we need to prep, which we get to talk about today. today. Yay! Where that came from. This portion is where that came from. The prep day, the Friday when you pulled the manna. But anyway, we may not get there. Probably not. 
<laughs> so um, that's like one more chapter away. I don't know if we'll be able to get. I there. don't even think we're going to get that. <laughs> okay, so I have to say, um, in Exodus fourteen twenty four, which says, "Now it came about during the morning, watch that Adonai looked at the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud and caused the army of the Egyptians to panic." So what <laughs> the look that'll give you a nightmare <laughs> mothers you know the look <laughs> that's that's so the my look. mom my daughter was like she always says mom i'm she always thought that she i was i was raised by african-american women because she's like you were like don't don't make me like I, there was a look and i was so scared mom she's like i probably spanked her maybe five times on the high knee like it was like paddled her booty but she would be like i knew the look and i was scared I mean, I would, I would be like, I will make another one look just like you. So mm, no. <laughs> and it would, there was a look and she was scared. And I'm saying, I, there is moms, you guys all know it. And your children should know it. And if you don't, you need the look, your children need to know the look. And what happened is they, they, the look of the army and it caused the Egyptians to, to uh, panic. It, it caused them to, <laughs> he looked at him so through, that's the fire. <laughs> through the gonna, fire. I'm <laughs> sorry, but I, I hung out there a little while this morning. I was like, he looked at them through the fire. Woo! I was like this. I'm like, wait, right? I got my eyes on you. <laughs> my little, my little Eliza, who's almost going to be five in April, she'll be like, <laughs> my oh, sister. That. I can't even. I can't even. She's so, so I love your it. I just, She's your mini me. Oh, she's so my mini me. But but the look, ladies, don't you love it that he loved them so much that he gave the the army the look. Yeah. Like he gave them the look, and they were like, yeah. oh. And you, and you realize that when he gave them the look, it wasn't so I'm going to look at you and I'm going to destroy you. And that's it. You know, that, that the creator of the universe is always about redemption. So in those moments, can you imagine how many hearts turned, how many hearts turned in that moment? Wow. Yeah. Because he's always about redemption. Yeah. Always, always about redemption. Yeah. Even in judgment, because his judgment is his judgment is always pure. And he said that that his plan and purpose is for all men to know him. So even that look, come on now. But I can only imagine coming through the fire, coming through the cloud. Yikes. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's Simi's got some Simi's got some creation gospel wisdom to share with us. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to reinforce those elements. So, you know, repetition, repetition, and that's how we learn. <laughs> so so they get out of Egypt, right? So that's the light of the first day. And they're still in the desert, but they get to the waters. And they're like, uh, we can go anywhere. They're behind us. We're going to die. You have to remember the water, the sea, also means nations. So... We have to keep that in mind that as they're crossing through the Red Sea, they are, God is going to bring us into the nations. Our lives will interject li the life where we are put in because we have been all placed in this world for such a time as this, right? So they have to go through the nations in order to go to the other side. Now, who drowns in that water is those that are not going to, um, that they're, they're mean is to destroy us. So, you know, God takes care of us. He fights for us. Yes. And that word you were talking about, uh, hardening um, the, the heart of Pharaoh, you know what that word is? Hasak. We say that word yeah. every time we finish a book. Yeah. Hasak. Right? Yep. Yes, yep, we do. It, it all, it, all that means is he strengthened what was already mm -hmm. in Pharaoh's heart. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh said, I'm going to kill them. He strengthened that. So, okay, go and do it. Because that was a learning, mm -hmm. um, you know, an actual lesson for his people. So it, it had to come that, that way. So, um, but this is what's neat. So, okay, day one, light comes out of darkness. So Israel comes out of Egypt. Day two, the waters part, right? So we have the Red Sea parting and then day three, the, wa the waters gathered to let the dry land appear. There is not a coincidence that he would put there that they walked on dry land. He wanted to tell them, you know creation, you know this by memory, they all did. You're walking on dry land because resurrection is coming. 
So I just thought those three elements were just so beautiful. Oh, and 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 Simi, that's so good because it said that they were it was three days that they were going before they got to Mara. It was three mm -hmm. days. And and that hit me yeah. when I was uh, reading that last night again, because mm -hmm. whenever we see the number three, it's always about you got to think about the third day of creation. You got to think about the resurrection and the completion to make it tove, Amen. To make it tove, pulled apart. Um, separated in order to bring together, to bring Tove, to bring good. And that's what was happening here. I love that. So Charlie, are we going to talk about the Mara, about the water, or are we going to skip over that and go to I don't next? even know what you want to do. I'm just going to, I'm just sitting here going, really? I mean, all of you guys, we are ruined. We are, if you can't We're ruined. tell. Yeah. Uh, Brenda and I have just started workbook one of creation gospel and me the, I mean, y'all pray, <laughs> pray, pray for us. Y'all pray for us because everything we talk about now, you will get it related to the creation gospel. It'll be related to how does this go back to creation? Yeah. And so we really appreciate Simi is, is an instructor in the creation gospel. She's actually teaching a class in Spanish right now. So, so it was exciting. So good last night was her first one. I have to give this testimony go. if you let me. Okay. Oh, <laughs> go for it. It was so sweet because um, we're just doing a pilot right now because the, um, the, in, the Spanish uh, manual has to be revised. And there's some things that were, you know, yours is that thick. Um, mm -hmm. You saw the creation mm -hmm. gospel that uh, Brenda was showing is this thick. The Spanish one is like half of it because it is the translation of that one way back then when it was also little. Oh, She's got it. adding a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so eight years ago, I was working with Freedom in Christ and I did our first conference in Spanish, a, a practicum, it was, was really, it was to train them um, in Miami. And uh, three of the people that are in my little pilot because I only have five people. So in uh, and, and this time, I all of us are- I can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't the, hear you. There, there you are. are. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. A call was coming in. Okay. So, um, so all of us are going to do the, the, the re-editing and adding. So then we'll have the finished product. And when we have it, that Holisa can put it on the website, then it will be open for others. So it's just our pilot. So, uh, but three of the people that were in that practicum eight years ago, and thanks to Facebook that brings you those memories, I saw, <laughs> oh, wow, eight, eight years ago, we were together for the first time doing the Freedom in Christ. You know, I was training them to be counselors and then um, for the Hispanic community. And here they are going with me through this pilot. Um, and, uh, but there was one girl that I hadn't been able to connect with. And she is, um, she's a believer, still in, in her Christian church. And um, she's a counselor. She's a radio announcer. She's, she's you know, very involved. Um, but I thought, you know, could it be that God is not time for that? And uh, I would love for her to be part of this because she is professionally um, a Spanish editor. So she will be, you know, the person that I really want. But, you know, if it's not your time, it's okay. Well, we tried to connect on Sunday, we could, and we tried to connect on Monday, we could, and then finally we were going to connect, third day, <laughs> third, third tr try, on Tuesday. And, um, and ah, my day was just long visits and all that, so I'm like, ah, it's too late, I, it's already half an hour late, and then the Lord said, call her. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I call her, and I explain to her, you know, what we're going to do, you want to be part of it. So there is this long silence. And then she goes, well, let me tell you what happened this morning. So, you know, with that tone of voice, I'm like, okay, you know, she's going to tell me no in a polite way. Right. So um, she said, I was praying this morning and in my devotional time, I asked the Lord speak to me and he gave her a scripture in Ezra. And uh, so she reads it. And it's when, you know, they find the scrolls and they're just all crying. They're reading it out loud, you know, that, that portion. And um, she is grabbed by it. And she said, oh, 
Father, I want to learn. I want to know more. I don't know how to go about it. I don't have any idea how to study, um, you know, anything that is in the Old Testament because she was never taught any of that. And, and she's like, I don't know how to go about it. You're going to have to show me. You need to teach me. So now you call me. I, I don't have to pray about it. I don't have to ask the Lord. I just say, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I want to be part of it. And it was so amazing. So last night we had our first class and she was just this, the Christian gospel. If any of you that are listening to me right now, haven't done it, you should. It is an amazing method of study. It just breaks down scripture in a, a way that it's really easy to follow. And she was amazed. She's like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. So this other couple were our pastors and they had um sunday's you know church um and they uh they changed it to keep shabbat and they're teaching now the portions and the torah and all this so it's just been so sweet to see what god has done in oh. this last eight years and eight is the number of new beginnings thank yes, you so thank, I thank you god. thank you for thank sharing you. that thank you erica Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I was just, as we're talking about the creation gospel, um, so I'm, I've known about it for a while, but I'm just now starting to get into it and really understand, um, you know, those chiastic structures and seeing creation kind of that creation story over and over. So um, I know we see it in Noah and Noah's Ark. You kind of see the repetition there. And, um, and so this isn't, I did not come up with this chiasm, but I see, I saw it last year before I really knew about chiasms, it, like, um, but, uh, on Aleph Beta, um, Rabbi Foreman, um, when he talks about this Torah portion, he goes through and says that, um, you know, you have the wind over the waters, um, you have the pillar of cloud. So you've got, you've got darkness and you've got light. Um, and then the dark is for Egypt because the, the cloud moves to the back. And so it's separating them out. Um, you have the waters that get divided. So you have divided waters and then you have land, the dry land. Um, and then life came through that land. And what's the interesting thing when I heard it last year, because it would have been, you know, Tuba Shavat at that time too, which I knew nothing about at that time either <laughs> until last year. But uh, he just- a celebration of the new year of the trees. The new year for the trees. Yeah. Yep. So he just kind of offhandedly um, mentions trees in the sea. And that might be the name, if you're familiar with Aleph Beta, that might be the name of one of the videos. Um, but- he talks about uh, there's fruit trees in, in the sea as they cross. And I'm like, what is that? But that is a Midrash story um, that kind of fills in that. But, uh, but that is part of like the chiasm is that there was life that came through. Um, man and beast both came through. And then, um, you know, the sages then say that the, the, there were the trees that were there too. And um, he goes into, a, I won't go into all that, but he goes into a really beautiful story about the redemption of like the Eve story and the fruit with that. He does that on a part two, but then what was really cool in that verse, we just read about um, the, you know, as the father like took the, the, the night watch, I think it was, I think he says maybe, or the first watch and, um, you know, gives that fire and cloud to them. So then we see the chaos returning. So he had brought, he had taken those waters and he had divided it. So, so there's your creation story. You know, you've got your, your, your divisions and your waters and, and life coming through. And then for the Egyptians, chaos returned and you have the mixture of the fire and the light or fire and the light and the dark. And you have, um, let's see, uh, the he says the division collapsed on Egypt. So there's chaos in the army. Uh, the walls of the water collapse. Um, there's no dry land. So um, I don't know. It was just this year. It kind of I heard it last year, but yeah, I thought it was kind of cool. But this year, 
kind of learning more about those things and kind of having that mindset of seeing how he is always bringing us back to the garden. Absolutely. That's what it's always about. Always bringing us back to the creation, right? Always bringing us back to those days where everything is solidified and the structure is, is established. Absolutely. And then he just keeps bringing us back. So Charlie, what, what were you, what was the next thing that you wanted to talk about? Were you thinking about, and thank you, Erica, by the way, that's awesome. You know, I, I think we, um, we, t- we, we were going to, let's do next year. Let's really get into the song because we know that that song is still the yeah. song being sung in heaven. I mean, it's Absolutely. one of the beautiful songs. We also know it's mm-hmm. one of the 10, I think the 10 songs, the last one will be sung when Yeshua uh, takes the throne, right? It's one of the yes. 10 songs. I just, it's beautiful that that happened. I love the women dancing. A lot of you wonder why women are dancing at messianic synagogues or our congregations that comes from this. This is a, I love that the women dance. And I just call you, I know last night when we had music playing, it's like sometimes in your homes to break, to break the Egypt off of you, you need to just dance. Maybe you need to get some tambourines for your kids and you just need to shake and make some noise. You'll hear some people like, will clap. The clapping is, I think is symbolic of that too. Sometimes it just breaks some things. It breaks yucky vibrations in the air and you're just resetting the vibrations and resetting like things in your home so it could be you turn on some worship and you get everybody clapping and i promise you the mood will change i promise you things will change that they came through despair and they were rejoicing um they came through the water mara we have a mem resh and a hey <laughs> we they came through hey. mara. i just we're going to talk about i mean Gosh, that water that came out of that rock that ends up, he gets to the water that sustains them through the wilderness, Brenda. Hmm. I wonder what that, hmm, hmm. the water that sustains you. Hmm. Oh, wait, I'm mean, the woman at the well and there was some water that I never thirst again. I don't know. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the, see how beautiful and, and, and Simi and Erica both um, touched on this, Charlie, is that the, that how this is being used in in this it's reminding us it's like when it talks about the water that's pouring out that's going to feed three million or uh cover three million people with their thirst with their animals with all of those things with their cooking with everything that they need all of that water in the middle of the desert fresh water that's sweet in the middle of the desert okay supernatural just a little bit wait a minute and the rock follows them throughout 40 years of their cover, their, their journey through the wilderness, the rock that's underneath Moses as his arms are being lifted by Aaron and her, the rock, the rock that produces water that is giving them water that never ends. Yeah. See how beautiful this is. I mean, there's so much, there's so much depth. That's why Charlie and I are like, how do we even cover what do we pick? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, what do you, you know? So I mean, we go and then we go into the manna. We hear manna. supernatural food that's just dusted what? over everything. It's like, what? And I know Matthew 6, Yeshua tells us to remind us we're not supposed to worry about our food. I mean, I I, t- I put a little title on my notes saying, no hoarders allowed. You right. know, and why? Why weren't they allowed to hoard? Why weren't yeah. they allowed? hoard up things and get extra because that would induce a spirit of fear yeah that was also and also self self self-contained like there well i'll take care of this i'll just get extra today and i'll have plenty for tomorrow Uh uh-uh there's a lot of reasons right think on that say law why couldn't they just have some and not have to you know work hard one day and then i know it seems there's a mentality right now you know that you work really hard and then you and then you can play really hard you know I, i i agree with that to a lot of extent but there's also a thing where we're told that he teaches us. So he's, he's keeping us so that we uh, moderate our time. We, he's teaching us about rhythms. He's yes. teaching about time, but he's teaching about Shabbat in this section. Yes, he is. This is how you're to honor this because yeah. I mean, consistency of that manna miraculously changed on this Shabbat, it, the consistency yep. of it. Yep. Because before that, if you, if it kept in a pot, it would turn to worms, right? Maggots, right. gross. Right. Right. But the consistency changed for Shabbat and that didn't yeah. happen. Yeah. And they were, and they were told to gather as much as they would need. Gather as much as you need and not a want. double portion. No, not, not, no. And then a double portion on Friday so that on Saturday you have no worries. Your provision is there. You don't have to worry about it. 
it's something that he's teaching us as his people. This is so essential that we get this. Yes. It's so essential. If, if you do nothing else this week or this weekend, as you ponder the things of the Holy One and his word, ponder, what does that mean for me? What does that mean that, that you provide for me when I'm not providing for myself? When mm. you're saying that you're enough, that you will cover what I don't have. It is, it's life-changing. And, and so they have, they have this. And then I love the part where it says, where the, the Holy one says, now gather some up and put it in a jar and put it with the testimony. Hmm. The, put it with the testimony. Okay. Put it with the testimony. Just think on that for a moment, what time this was and when this was happening, put it with the testimony for all time so that you'll always be reminded of what the Holy one did. So even that somewhere, it's somewhere, we don't know where it's somewhere. <laughs> Won't that be fun to have that uncovered? <laughs> Put it in the stuff. Well, I, I, I'm going to take you guys back. I read something and I'm going to, I don't, I hope I get, uh, John two 20. Uh, I just going to want you to write that verse on John two 20 and first Corinthians six, only because of what I'm going to tell you about even going back to that song is, is about John two 20 is about are your life being yielded and about it being a tabernacle and first Corinthians six, it, it's about our body being the temple. And the reason I say that is because, um, if this isn't the taste of Torah, I just want to, so the song of Moses, um, it says the Lord is my strength, my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God. This is my God. And I will praise him. The Hebrew word on ve was the same root as nave oasis, peaceful dwelling place. The 2000 year old Aramaic translation of the Bible reads the verse like this. This is my God and I shall build or become a temple for him. Become. I will become a temple for him. It was presented also most meaningful um, interpretation. This is my God to whom would I be a habitation? In other words, I shall become his house. I shall offer myself to him as a habitation all my life and all my being shall become a temple to his glorification, a place in which he will be revealed for he shapes my fate and my inner life. He is the power that moves me. That's another interpretation of that verse in that song. He was, they were already saying, I will become the tabernacle as they were going into the wilderness. They're saying, I will become the temple. I will become the tabernacle. I mean, these are some newly released slaves, right? Right. They are not even fit to function as tabernacle people or workers or to be a tabernacle. They are not fit mm -hmm. to function, but yet they're saying, Hinani. Yes. Hinani. I shall say it right. That's I mean, right. have I like, gone to sleep like singing like Bat Rivka, that her song, oh. like, Hinani, Hinani Adonai. Oh, like over and over in my head. I go to bed. It's in my head. I wake up. It's in my head. Oh, stop. Put that down. You guys want to see this? You guys want to see this? Oh, that's the olden days when there was cassettes and you handed them out at the end of your concert. Oh my God, I forgot this about is, that one. Shh, quiet, so they can see me. This, guys, is one of Charlie's CDs. Well, it's, it's, it's pre-CD. It's a cassette. A lot of you have, were born after these stopped being made. That's so funny. Isn't that so cute? I just had to have a little, I'm sorry, crazy. Sis, I just had that's to have so a little. Funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We are commanded Amen. in all of this, Brenda, to not forget. Yes. Amen. We're not, we're commanded not to forget. It's interesting that as yeah. Americans, we will stand up for on 9 11 because we will never forget. Right. And he's telling us here, yeah. we're commanded to never forget. And that's the reason we go through Pesach. And that's the reason, the reason we go through the, uh, I love that we, in going through even our Shabbat, you know, a lot of us don't take on traditions, but can I just explain a couple of them? One of them, because of that, because of the way that they gathered and prepared for two on Friday for the, for the, for the Shabbat, that's the reason we call today prep day. So you'll hear people I've right. seen them come happy prep day, happy prep day. Mm -hmm. The reason we call it prep day, it's because they were taught to be it to be a prep day. The reason they had two loaves of challah was because it was to, to represent the double portion. Some of you don't understand why they'll lift the two breads up and they'll bless them. Um, and we even say, you know, blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe who brings bread from the earth. Now, many of you are thinking, oh, well, yeah, it rises up, wheat grows, we make bread. Yeah, but they're remembering this happening. He brought bread from the earth. It, he, they woke up and they 
collected the manna and they made the bread and and um their sweet cake i mean it was fabulous it was guys sweet. it was yeah. sweet it was and like woo and the word for hala actually means portion hala is het lamed hey let me just sit in that wow. one for a little bit the picture for hala and and because it's the bread of life and yes. what is what is the word the portion what is the word mm. it is the bread of life what is the water it is the water that washes that cleanses that refreshes that renews that brings forth life that satisfies remember yeshua you know moses is talking yeshua is quoting him basically when he's talking to the woman at the well because moses is saying um where is it saying in 17 uh, the people are saying, give us water that we may drink. And so, and so Moses, um, is giving them water and that's what Yeshua is doing, not quoting, but that's what Yeshua was doing was giving water, water that would water that would satisfy, that would cleanse, that would renew, that would refresh. It's all it's, he's bringing it to us. And and this is where we need to sit in this Torah portion, Charlie, right? We need mm -hmm. to sit in this and, and understand that all of these elements that are being brought. And as Erica and Simi had mentioned, it's all from the creation day. He's reminded us about creation, about who he is, how great he is. All of these elements are, are from the creation story. Everything that's happening, even the trees, which are also uh, reflective of people in, in, in the, in the Bible, when it's talking about trees, it's actually talking about people. And when you're talking about seas, you're talking about nations, like Simi said. So all of these elements are, are really speaking to our hearts to awaken us. And the, and if we could get this message this week, and if we could just get one manna. message this week, the man at right, stop complaining. Yeah. Because when we complain, we are not complaining. If I'm complaining about my husband, I am not complaining to my husband. I'm complaining to God and telling God that he doesn't know what he's doing and that he made my husband wrong and that I am dissatisfied because God didn't come through for me. That's basically what I'm saying, which is what the people were saying. Why can't we go back to Egypt? We could go back to our, our leeks and onions and da, 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 da. And oh, we need this and we need more and we need really he's giving them heaven's bread from heaven on earth bread to eat that will satisfy them and keep them whole and healed where there's no disease bread that is completely the doctor and the nurse all put together <laughs> all the vitamins all the minerals everything that's needed right then and there and they complained because that's human nature doesn't mean that it's right. It means right. that that is the, the rush. That's the sole part of the brain wanting to be in charge. Yeah. And if we, that's not what he wanted in Debar. That's not. No. It was, a place, it was a place for them to learn and to grow. So he's going to, yes. he's going to love the hell out of him. You guys through this whole <laughs> 40 years, we're going to watch him love the hell out of them. And one of the ways he does it is the, with the Mayim, the Mem, the Yod, the Mem Sofit. Yes, the the Mayim, mm -hmm. that water of life that takes you from one place, releases the power and the majesty of God himself. That's the Yod. And the Mem Sofit is the river of life. It's taking you back to Psalm 1, right? It's taking us back to that, that we are a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaves will not wither and whatever we do prospers. That's where it's taking us. That water is picking us up, releasing the power of God and taking us into the divine connection with the creator of the universe. That that's Mem. I mean, that's Mayim. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well done. Again, we should have started with that. Uh, yeah, we end up with Amalek. We talk about Amalek, and I mean, I Love think we're it. almost done here. We let's, Amalek. We we're told to it. remember Amalek. We're told to do that. Right. Even First Corinthians three one through nine, Paul talks about you know how quarreling is worldly. Now, sisters, we've I mean, look at your Facebook page. Who are you quarreling with? Not okay. Not okay. And one of the things in this whole section about this whole story about Amalek, I, I'd love for you y'all to just. I'm, I'm, we're not going to do this, but I want you to. I mean, here's things you can put in your little notebook that someday I'm going to come back and look at this up. Seven times in this story about Amalek, the word for hand or hands is used about the battle and how it's fought. 
at Rephidim Mm -hmm. and it's told the weakened hands. And I'm just curious, like fathers, because they had to come with weakened hands, we have to come with humble, outstretched arms. We have to come with weakened hands and the battle's not ours. We just get to be still. I mean, how many things we see that he's telling us right now, he says, I know you're weak. I know you're Mm -hmm. tired. I know your world is crazy right now. I know that I'm delivering you out of the hand of Egypt. It doesn't look like what you think. You think an election didn't go your way or it went your way. You think this is happening and this is happening in my neighborhood. This is happening in my community. This is happening in my fellowship. But what if, ladies, what if we could stand in that and say, Father, thank you. Thank you that you are loving the hell out of all of us. You are loving us us so much that you won't send me to the straight through the coast that you actually won't let me take this junk into where you're sent me and my family you won't let us bring all the baggage with us you're going to let us work out all our baggage and you're going to do it in a private place and keep it private so don't go air it you don't have to air it to everyone that he's working all these crazy things out in you because all my mom will say you're just showing your tail like don't go show your tail to everybody okay you it's a place where I know that's what I love about being in here is it's a safe place for us to sometimes we might accidentally show our tail, but we can love each other and understand that we're all in a, in a wilderness together. We're all in Debar. We're mm-hmm. all in a place where he's saying, I'm at the door knocking. Let me in. Let me come into your house and sup with you and eat with you and be with you. And let me establish who you are. Let me establish your destiny. Let me establish the things with you. This is the part. This is the season we're in, ladies. It is over and over being drilled into us, not just our mindset, but our identity, who we are and whose we are. I I read way back early and I I didn't want to forget it. And I thank you, Father, for bringing it to my memory. Joanne Roberts says we have to remember it's not about where we were delivered from, but we were delivered also where we were delivered to. Yes. And I want you to remember he did not save you just to just to leave you and kill you. He didn't bring you out of wherever he brought you out of just to leave you here. And he's faithful to finish what he starts yes he is. and let's not talk about you let's talk about your family let's talk about your children let's talk about your uncle let's you talk about the crazy people you think we're never going to change he is faithful to finish what he starts can you stand it and say thank you father thank you you love him so much you're trusting me with his crazy you are trusting me to walk alongside this person while they're working their stuff out in their debar thank you that you trust me to do that and not expose them. Right. Oh, that's so beautiful. The comp- the complaining, the um, the the arguing. That's what destroys community. That's why we have in our in the portion. That's why Charlie and I are so adamant about. It's okay for us to have disagreements, d- doctrinal, uh, theological disagreements. You know, all of that stuff. Hey. That, that is perfectly fine, but we really are promoting that we do all of that in love and respect and us being right does not build relationship mm-hmm. demanding that we be right that that will destroy a marriage, it will destroy a community. Yes. Um, we have to learn to be humble and be loving and be accepting and we can disagree and we can we can we can do it with respect and with love. Because we want to practice in here how we are to be walking out our lives. And it's not about an individual salvation, guys. It never was. He didn't bring one person out of Egypt. He brought them all, anyone who would. Exactly. With all kinds of different viewpoints and different beliefs and different gods and different, all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he brought them and he's teaching us through this, that we have to have community. It's not about us individually. It's about, it's about our community arm in arm. Look at what happened with Moses. You know, Joshua, Joshua is being sent into the fight because uh, Amalek is coming up behind sneaky. Amalek is sneaky. He comes from behind. He comes to grab you when you least expect it. He's coming behind and they send Joshua out to deal with it. And Moses starts getting tired. And so he has to sit on the rock and have his arms held up by two other people. That's community, guys. And while that happened, there was victory. In the community, there was victory. It's so important. We cannot cut ourselves off from other people. That's why we're gathering. And I just pray a blessing upon you, each and every one of you, especially those that are, that are 
isolated, really isolated. And I know that some of you are very isolated because of what's happening, that he has brought you to a place where women will gather with you yes. and where we are going to love, even in the differences, it's fine. We will love and we will encourage and we will build up and we will strengthen and we're going to practice it so that we get so good at it that when this whole thing is released and we're running around like calves out of the stalls and we're hugging everybody in sight, um, uh, that we will have, we'll, we'll, we'll have learned, we'll have learned to control this or at least be better at it, yes. right? Moving forward. Yes. Very good. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you, Father, Thank for you. the time that we get to gather. I thank you that you mm -hmm. seal the word. And again, anything that's spoken that wasn't in alignment with your words, your way, your plans, yes. that you would just Eliminate remove it, it and mm -hmm. just blot it. And we don't remember it happened. Right. Forgive us, Father, for operating in our flesh in any way. Father, we just release your spirit. We thank you as you're operating in each home, as women prepare their home for their Shabbat. We thank you, Father, as you are blessing them, that you give a, an encounter that's what I ask. <coughs> Excuse me, Father. <coughs> An encounter. Encounter them, Lord. And that we each would say, I'm here, Father. Yes. Here I am. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Bless these ladies, Father. Surround them with your peace. Thank you that you don't peer through the cloud and give us the look, but instead... You look up upon us with love and that you dance over us and you sing over us. We thank you, Father, for that. And we just love you. Be with yes. each woman and her family. Yes. Amen. Amen. Ladies that are over in Facebook, of all of you watching the replay, thank you for hanging out with us, coming back around. If you are still in Facebook Live with us, you're welcome to still hop over to the after party. We turn everyone loose. <laughs> That's right. Thanks so much.